Hey guys, my name is Aaron from Geeky Lemon Development and welcome to our Xcode tutorials. In this tutorial, we're going to be learning all about activity indicators within the Swift language. Now, before we jump straight into this, if you enjoy this tutorial and want to further your knowledge and learning ability, why not enroll in one of the many courses we have available on iOS development? All links for these will be down below in the description. But let's jump straight in to the tutorial. In our previous lecture, we set up our very own WebView application to allow our users to search and display websites from directly within the application. We set the interface, we added in all the constraints, so it's pretty much now universal, works in every screen size and device type. Uh, we implemented the search bar, which we haven't set up the functionality just yet. We're doing that in the next lecture, but we did set up the functionality to display websites and all of our buttons at the bottom now work. We can go backwards, forwards, refresh, and even stop loading the page. Now in this lecture, we're gonna focus on our activity indicator. And what is an activity indicator? Well, think of this. If you've ever been on like a normal website, or on a PC or desktop or it may be, or mobile phone, when you search something, normally you're given an indication that the page is loading. Whether it's a loading bar or an egg timer or something spinning around animating on the screen, you're visually given and made aware that the page is loading. And that's pretty much what an activity indicator does. It can simulate to a user visually that something's happening on the screen. Now at the moment, if I was going to go and search on Google, search Apple, right now, pages just load up, as you can now see, nothing really much changes on the screen. So for the most part, you don't really know the page is loading until it loads. So sometimes if your user had a really bad internet connection, web pages can take a while to load up. So for the most part, they'll probably be you know, staring at this blank white screen, probably thinking that your application's crashed. And if they think that, what's the, the first thought they do? Close the application, don't open it. This application doesn't work, I'm not using it. So we're going to add in these activity indicators then to when the page loads up, it just visually shows to the user, something's happening. Just hold on. We'll get you a content. Something's happening. And it's like a mind trick. They know it's coming. So how are we going to implement this then is we're going to go straight into our main.storyboard. So within our main.storyboard, we're going to click on our library at the top here and simply type in our activity uh, indicator view. And we're going to drag and drop that in within our application. Now, if, to begin with, it is tiny. It is very, very small. So if you bring up our side panel there for our attributes inspector, we can actually change it to go a little bit bigger within the style. So if I select large white, it makes it just a tiny bit bigger. Not by much, but visually, we have to see it a lot clearer. Now, even though it's large white, it doesn't mean we have to have it the color of white. Uh, we can change it. So the color here is set by default and I can choose it to be like the dark gray to simulate the rest of the view. And that's pretty much how an activity indicator looks like. And you've probably seen them in many various applications that you use. So what I'm gonna do is just simply have it centralized on the screen. So it's entirely up to you where you wanna pull it. And then what I'll do, I'll simply add in some constraints now to pin it all the way around the edge right now, adding those four constraints. So no matter what happens, what screen size we work on, that should always be centralized within the view. If I zoom out, and uh, some reason there, <laughs> as you can see, on the iPhone X, our screen is a little bit weird. So we might have to uh, check in with that right now. I think it's the activity indicator constraints that's kind of just messed with our search bar. If so, if that is the reason, we'll redo the constraint right now. So yeah, okay. So <laughs> our activity indicator is kind of really messed with our constraint there. So let's get rid of our debug area here. And what we'll do is uh, we'll, we'll simply undo it and go originally back now to the point where we didn't have any constraints in our activity indicator. There we go. And an easy way to fix that then is one, we can fixate the height of our search bar. So choose that there. That kind of solves that issue. And then if I selected to add in the constraints once more this time, it won't mess with the sizing of that. It's kind of pulling on it and then dragging it down uh, as a way to mess about with it, which we don't really want that to happen. Uh, and for the most part, we can either choose to um, kind of align it centrally. So if I, even if I didn't have those constraints in, I can go down to the align options here. And at the very bottom, I can choose to horizontally in the container and vertically in the container, adding those two constraints. So pretty much if I worked on a different screen size now, it's always gonna align it to the center. That's how it works. It's pretty cool, isn't it? So we've got that in them. 
looking really, really good. So let's go back to our original one. Close that down. And what we're going to do now then is add in uh, the outlet to be able to reference it to make it start appearing on the screen and disappearing on the screen uh, when something happens. Because how we want it to work is the web view is loading, show it to the user, make it spin around. When the web view has loaded, then hide it from the user. That's exactly how we want to get it set up. So close our little side panel here and bring up our little assistant editor. There we go. Either right click or control click on the activity indicator and drag and drop it over underneath our outlet for our web view. There we go. Now I simply call it act int, there we go, short for activity indicator. Makes a lot more sense shorten it down because it's quite a long word. And once we've got the outlet added in, we can now close the assistant editor, go back to our standard editor, jump into our view controller.swift where we can now code it to tell it what we want it to do. Okay then, so exactly how are we going to tell you what we want it to do? Well, when the view loads up, we're first going to set up its configuration. We're going to first add it as a sub view to our web view. We're going to start animating it. We also need to set the ability to hide it when it's stopped and equal it to our navigation delegate. Now, the reason we equal it to our navigation delegate is so we can use our WK kind of a web a kit format or functionality to, to read our function statements. So we can have two functions set up. One for when it does finish loading on the screen and one for if it did fail to load so we can cover our backs if any errors occur. So to work with this and implement this, just after our UI view controller here, we're going to do a comma and add in uh, simply then our WK navigation delegate. There we go. So we've got that in and we'll come back to that in just a moment. It might bring up a warning in the project. It might not. Nine times out of ten, it shouldn't. But it's just down to the fact that we haven't got the functionality um, function set up just yet. But after the view loads up, anyway, we'll come back to that in just a moment. After the view loads up here and it displays the request within our web view, we're now going to get it set up to call upon our web view again to do dot add a sub view. And what we're going to add into it is our activity indicator. So we're adding it as a sub view to our web view so they're kind of combined and linked together. We're then going to set our activity indicator to dot start animating. So as soon as the kind of application loads up, it's going to pop up on the screen and start spinning around for us. We're then going to call upon our, uh, once more, our web view. And we're going to set our web view to the navigation delegate to equal self. This is so the web view can read these functions to tell the activity indicator what to do at certain times. And of course, we're going to get our activity indicator to then do dot hides when stopped to equal true. So this simply means that when the in, you know kind of animation or the loading has stopped on the screen, to then hide the activity indicator so your user can't see it. So those four four um, four kind of functions there get kind of triggered as soon as the view loads up. So now we're going to focus on this line here. So our web view dot navigation delegate equals self which is now linked back to our WK navigation delegate. So this function here that we've added in allows us to use other function statements within the application. So if I scroll down to where after we've added in all of our buttons there, we're going to add in two function statements which will now be linked to our web view. So if we type in our web view and we want the one for did finish, which is this one here, add that in. So this function here, for our web view, which the web view is now linked to its delegate, uh, did finish navigation. And basically what this is saying is when the web view has finished loading, it did finish loading, what do we want it to do? Well, we're going to call upon our activity indicator to do dot stop animating. So we're telling it to stop animating on the screen. And what happens when it stops animating? Well, we chose within the view did load to hide when stopped. So if it stops animating, it's already predetermined that it will hide when it's stopped. So then we're going to set up another function, which the fun next function is pretty much the same. So this is our web view, and this one is did fail uh, in our navigation here. It's for an error. So basically, if any errors occurred, and this covers our backs if our user didn't have an internet connection. So because it's going to load up anyway, and it's going to animate the view, uh, this line here kind of helps us for, if our user never had an internet connection, it's going to hide uh, the activity indicator because, like I said, it's not going to load up. So we don't want it to kind of give our users false hope. So this also uh, to stop animating. So one for when it finishes loading the website, another one for if uh, you know there's an error, like our user didn't have internet connection or anything like that. Both of them will end that function. So now that we got that in then, if I do go to build and run, 
you're only going to really see the uh, activity indicator come into play when the application loads up. So we'd have a split second there because Google loads up really, really quick. You did see it, then it disappeared. If I went to search for a website, for example, Apple and whatnot, you can see as I navigate through it, the activity indicator doesn't really appear anymore. So what we could do then is add in another function. And this next function here will be for did commit. So called when the web view begins to receive web content, meaning that every time the application loads up content within the web view, then our activity indicator can then dot start animating. And then when it starts animating, once it did receive or did fail, it will then stop animating. And that will constantly create like the back and forth, like loop between the two or the three functions to make it appear, make it disappear, make it appear, make it disappear. So then if I typed in this time, to go to Apple, it appears up and then disappears. If I went for example now the uh, Apple website, as it loads up, you can animate and disappears. Now Apple does load up quite quick and if I refreshed, you can kind of see it happen. If I go back, if I go forward, it only appears very quick because these websites do load up really quick, but then split seconds you do see it appear on the screen, which is pretty cool. It's always giving our user a visual indication for stuff happening on the screen. Not bad, is it? It is really, really good. So that's how we can implement these activity indicators and make them work and display, or visually display activity on our app. Now, we're pretty much all done here then. We're gonna move on to our next lecture. We're gonna talk all about the search bar within the application and how we can get that set up to allow our users to enter in their own web addresses to make them appear within the app.